Hi, I'm Mitch Shoemaker and today is day 27 of my doing 100 days of YouTube videos and focusing on recognizing God's hand in my life. So yay for today. Um, so <laughs> I had a lot of interesting things happen today. I realize it's been like a week since I've made a video so I could just do a whole week's worth of things. Um, but I'm not going to. I need to do better at doing these videos daily. But I am determined to get through my 100 days, no matter how long it takes me to do it. Um, anyway, so today, um, today I think I learned a lot of lessons, and I think that God was just helping me in my life, and mostly helping me to uh, to speak up, to speak out, and to show up, to be where I needed to be today, even if it's not necessarily where I wanted to be. And I know that He has granted me extra strength and guidance to get through today because. Um, Today was harder than I thought it was going to be, um, and not in the way that I thought it was going to be hard. So <laughs> don't give me. I didn't. Ex um, first thing I think I should mention is today's Father's Day, which is fine. Um, I usually have a hard time with Father's Day because I didn't have the best biological dad. But today, I, I mean, I got up, I got dressed, I read my scriptures and meditationals, and then it kind of popped into my brain. I'm like, oh yeah, it's Father's Day. Okay, no big deal. I didn't really care <laughs> one way or the other. Um, so I wasn't, um, I wasn't feeling hurtful, angry, resentful. I wasn't hating Father's Day today. I was okay with it being Father's Day. I was okay with going to church and listening to people talk about their dads and different things. And I was like, okay. And that's not really what everybody talked about at church. And I wasn't hyper-focused on that. And I was like, it was fantastic. I was great. So I was really grateful to God for that because <laughs> I had a completely different, like, I just, um, I was okay today with that being that particular holiday and I'm usually not so I was surprised by that so I'm just really grateful um, to be that in that place right now um, but then I went to church and I was wearing my uh, service missionary name tag um, I don't know if I've mentioned this in my videos before but I think someone asked me in my comments what my religion is so I belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints um, it is commonly referred to as the LDS Church, probably by the members, and commonly known to as, as the Mormon Church to people outside of my faith or religion. Um, but it is called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So, um, and I am a service missionary for my church. I'm not a proselyting missionary. I don't go door to door knocking and um, sharing the gospel with people that way. Like. Um, I kind of wanted to do that when I was younger, but I didn't have the opportunity. It just didn't work out for me um, when I was younger. And right now, I just do it as a service. Um, I help with the volunteers that come to help clean the temple. So I help clean our temple every week is what I do as part of, um, as my, as a service missionary. So it's, it, it's just something that takes up a little bit of my time, but I can still go about my, my work and my daily things that I need to do. Um, and so it, it is something all of us as missionaries for the church, we volunteer our time and we pay the money to go on missions, serve missions. So it's not um, something that the church pays us to do. Um, anyway, so, but I get to wear a little name tag to church on Sundays, which I kind of think is cool because I didn't get to go when I was younger. So I just like having the name tag, it makes me feel special. Um, but I kind of sometimes forget that, that also means that it's making me a representative of Jesus Christ and of his church. And so today someone saw my name tag and there was someone new at church that needed some help. And so they're like, oh, hey, you have a name tag, help this person. And I was like, okay, that's a, <laughs> that's a little outside my comfort zone. Okay, that's a lot outside my comfort zone. <laughs> I'm not the most social person. I have a hard time just walking up to people and starting conversations. It's just not something I've ever been good at. I've always been shy. So, um, and I'm okay when people go up and talk to me, but then they're talking to me and then telling me that I need to help someone else. And I was just kind of like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, I mean, I said hi to him. I asked him if he was going to stay for the second hour because church is two hours long and he was there for the first hour. And he was like, oh no, I got to go do something. And I was like, okay, that's fine. So we chatted for a little bit. He left. Everything was good. Okay, whatever. He said he was going to come back next week. And I'm like, fantastic. That's fine. Um, and then I went to the second hour 
and then I was going to just leave. We ended early so that um, all of the fathers could go get cookies because they really society made cookies for them. So they were all gathering at the kitchen to, to get cookies. And I'm like, I can't eat any of the cookies. I know that. They've probably got sugar and butter and milk and all that stuff in them. So I'm like, and it's for the fathers. It's not for the mothers anyway. So I'm like, and I'm leaving. And I walk outside and here is this um, this man that was new and needed some help. And he left and I was like, oh, I thought you left. And he was on the phone to someone. I was like, oh, I didn't realize you were on the phone. I'm like, I'm sorry, but he gets off the phone so he can talk to me. And I end up taking him back inside and introducing him to the bishop and um, moving forward with that to see if there's something that they can do to assist him. And it was interesting because he was telling me his story and I heard him telling everybody else his story. And I was just kind of like... I don't really care. And not in a not in a mean way, but I just feel like there's something about the Savior, about Jesus Christ, that he's not judgmental. And it doesn't matter what your past or your history is, if you're willing to come to him, it's a safe place. It's a safe place to come, it's a place to change, it's a place to get to to know the Savior and that he atoned for all of our sins and he is forgiving all of us. So here's this man that says he's made a lot of mistakes in his past and he wants to get closer to God. He wants to find God in his life and that's why he's at church. And I'm like, great, this is a great place to be. That's the perfect place for that. We'll be happy to help you in your journey to, to finding God in your life. And I think that's fantastic. And <laughs> he's telling me his past and I was like, <coughs> I'm like, oh, excuse me. <laughs> swallowed something funny um but I was like okay I'm sorry that happened to you I'm sorry that's in your past um but I didn't feel the need to like be judging him or saying that you know you shouldn't have done any of that stuff or you're not welcome because you did all of this stuff so I I feel like it was um that God was blessing me to to help him to feel like this was a safe place and that he could come and he could get help and he could find um refuge in the Savior and in God's love. And I thought that was just kind of an amazing thing. And like I said, I introduced him to the bishop and I'm like, okay, you're good. You're taken care of. And I'm going to just leave now because I really am not in um, a position to do that. I also, when we were going back inside the sister missionaries, the, the proselyting missionaries that um, teach the gospel and knock on people's doors and, and do all of that, were actually standing inside the foyer when we went back inside. And so I introduced him to them and they set up an appointment with him to meet with him later this afternoon. And then I took him to see the bishop. And so it was just kind of amazing how all of that fell into place. And I was like, so he literally sat outside in the heat for an hour when he could have sat inside for the other meeting. And then I still ended up doing all of that, which I wasn't planning. I didn't know any of that was going to happen today. So I think, um, God was using me to bless the life of someone else or at least help them in their journey in some way. And I think that was kind of, um, that was an amazing experience. That was an amazing way for me to see and to look at things in my life today. And I am, I'm extremely grateful for that. And um, then after church, I got to go visit my friend that's in, that's in the hospital. And um, I found myself, I met her daughter and um, I, <laughs> I, I found myself praying when I left, praying to have compassion for my sponsor friend's daughter because um, she wasn't the nicest person. <laughs> and I don't know that she's a mean person or a bad person. She just came off very, um, very curt, kind of a little bit rude. And I was just kind of taken aback by some of the things that she said. And um, she didn't appreciate, apparently she didn't appreciate some things that I had said when her brother was there last week, which I didn't know I said anything that was offensive. I didn't mean to be by any means. Um, but I, I prayed that I would have that compassion. And um, I had the opportunity later to talk to my sponsor friends, friend, Tucson friend, lots of friends, lots of confusing things going on right now. I apologize if there's too many people to keep track of, but um Anyway, it's not someone that I know. I'm not familiar with her. It's somebody else is my friend's friend of a friend, basically, from Tucson. And um, But I talked to her this afternoon, and in talking to her, um, I was given some insight and understanding into something that hadn't even occurred to me. And I was so grateful for that insight because it did give me some compa more compassion and understanding and context for the conversation that may have took place at the hospital with my sponsor friend's daughter. 
And um, not that I necessarily agree with her approach, but I had some compassion and some understanding and reminder that I have a completely different relationship with my sponsor friend than she has. And I know that when my biological mom passed away, I, I remember reading comments that people made on her Facebook page and for her funeral that were, um, that I was kind of jealous about and angry about because I didn't have that kind of relationship with my biological mom that these other people had. And even at that point in my life, I was grateful to God to remind me that, hey, at least somebody had that kind of relationship with my mom because she did have some very good, wonderful qualities. That's just, for whatever reason, we didn't have that relationship. And so I'm grateful that she had that with someone else, that she was able to be that kind of mom for someone else. And I don't think that my sponsor friend's daughter is in a place where she's willing to see that. And I know that she has kind of a strained, they have kind of a strained relationship. They don't, haven't gotten along well in the past and it can't be easy for her to be watching her mom go through this situation right now and having to take on the burden of taking care of her mom and seeing all of these people come in that have this different relationship <laughs> with her mom than she has. So, um, it gave me a different perspective and it gave me a place to be compassionate today. And in that way, God answered my prayers that I had today. He gave me something to pray for. I need something to answer my prayer um, because I am grateful that I chose to pray for compassion instead of leaving there just being okay. I'm like, I'm so angry and I can't talk to this person and I can't believe she was this way. I found myself praying to be compassionate towards her. And then I had a conversation with someone else that helped me to see that compassion, to find that compassion for this person. And I am so grateful that God answered that prayer for me. And I'm like, okay. And then of course I went to my um, my 12 step meeting today. So just a lot of things, it's Sunday, lots of spiritual things happen on Sundays, I think. <laughs> just put myself in those places. And I imagine if I'd put myself in that situation on every day, I would probably have a lot more experiences as well. But, um, it, the subject today in my 12-step program was honesty and talking about being honest. And I realized um, to me, in order for me to be honest, I have to feel safe. And sometimes it's really hard to be honest with myself um, because I have just always run away from myself. And when I'm having problems or things in my life, I just kind of avoid them. That's what I do um, instead of facing them. And so when I face them is a way for me to be honest with myself and it's easier for me to be honest with other people when I'm being honest with myself. And so that was kind of an interesting subject and also a reminder to me or something that popped into my head anyway was the safety thing that I have to be safe to be around other people. So um, I have to feel safe to share openly about certain things. Like there's just some things you can't openly honestly talk to people about it. And, and some people don't actually want an honest answer. Like, you know, sometimes they'll say, hey, how are you doing? Like, you know, at work or passing somewhere on the street and you're like, hey, I'm, I'm having a really bad day. And they're like, oh, I did not actually want to know that. I didn't really want an honest answer to that question. <laughs> so um, I was just kind of pointing out that it's not a black and white thing, but um, it can be for me. I can be honest with myself. And I can be honest with my friends and my family and um, hopefully honest with other people. But I think levels and degrees based on safety and how well I know someone, is it safe to share all of this information? And and sometimes it's, you know, I don't know that it's necessarily a lie of omission when you're just like, I don't know you well enough or feel comfortable enough to share all of my personal information with you. Um, so I think that's okay to to be safe, but I also think it's, it's good to be honest. So it was kind of... Um, interesting. There was lots of interesting comments and things that I learned there today. And I did, I did choose, um, I was sharing with my sister-in-law. I apologize. This is a really long video. <laughs> I learned a lot today, very much a lot. I was, um, I was sharing with my sister-in-law tonight on Marco Polo and she mentioned something when her grandmother passed away that she wanted to, to do something her grandmother did to kind of honor her grandmother's memory and to kind of feel like she was keeping her grandmother close. And my sponsor friend is always telling me to do the next right thing. And when her husband passed away years ago, she showed up and did stuff when she was grieving. Um, and even though she was still grieving and it was hard for her, she said, I just feel like I have to be here because I have to do the next right thing. I have to keep moving forward, even though it's hard. And I normally, when I'm grieving or I'm struggling with things, I shut down and I, 
push people away and I, <laughs> my life gets way worse because I stopped taking care of myself completely. And um, I've probably done that for a few days this past week. Um, and I've just felt overwhelmed with everything and then just frustrated because I'm not doing that. So today I was thinking the next, the next good thing, the next right thing is what I need to do today. And so I got out my, my grief book and I was um, reading in there and it was talking about losses and it said something about um, how losses, like reoccurring losses, like stuff from the past comes back up and maybe it's not that we haven't processed it, maybe it's just that we need to process it on a different level or that we can't handle all of the grief all at once and so it comes in stages because that's the way that God is blessing us in our lives and I'm like, I think that's, that's true and that's helpful. But I had a lot of other insights that God gave me when I was writing about that and thinking about that. And some of them were that it's good to have the losses come back up because they're reminders that I survived losses in the past and I can survive this one because I did it before, I can do it again. It's proof that I have the strength to go through this and that I can handle this with God's help. And so he's reminding me that I've done this before and I can do it again. And I know how hard it is because I've done it before, but I also know that I can do it again because of that. And then there was also the thought that, you know, in order to feel that loss, in order to have that grief, I had to have loved. I had to have had some good memories, some good times. And there's reminders of the good times and the things that I have learned from the different people and different things in my life that have got me to where I am today. And so remembering those losses or having things triggered is an opportunity for me to to see what I've learned from the different people in the different places in my life, an opportunity to see how much I've grown and changed and an opportunity to, to look and see how I process things in the past. And if it worked, I can keep doing that. And if it didn't work, how I can respond differently to the situation. And I can see how I'm responding a little bit differently this time and how I've grown and how I have a completely different perspective because um, because I now know that my sponsor friend has had a stroke, a massive stroke, and um, possibly two different strokes. I'm not entirely sure if it was one or two at this point, but um, she's having difficulty. She can talk a little bit, but she can't see, and she doesn't have use of like one side of her body, and she struggles to like control the other side that she does have some use to, um, and she's having a lot of other issues. But I've had people in my family that have had strokes. My my grandpa on my biological dad's side had a stroke um, when I was three and he didn't pass away until I was 10. And all I really remember, I have one memory of him before his stroke and everything else after that, he was in a wheelchair. He couldn't you know, take care of himself. He was either in a nursing home or my grandma was trying to take care of him because she didn't think the nursing home was doing a good enough job. And then when she was just stressed out from trying to do everything, then she put him back in the nursing home. So she was like back and forth with whether or not he was there and whatever. And he was always trying to communicate and he was always going, ma, 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 ma. he was drooling. And I just like, I was afraid of my grandpa and he would try to like, you know, grab our hands as, and try to shake our hand and he didn't couldn't tell how strong his grip was so it would always hurt when he squeezed our hands and I was just like I was afraid of my grandpa I'm like I didn't want to be around him I didn't understand him I didn't understand what was going on and I don't remember anyone trying to explain it to me or tell me anything like that and I know my grandma was trying to be like because he would like point and he would get all upset she's like I'm trying to understand what do you want what do you want and he just had to have been so frustrated not being able to communicate and he was stuck like that for seven years I'm like oh my goodness um and I had an uncle that passed away recently in the past year or so I think and um he had a stroke several years ago before my grandma passed away and so he was kind of in a similar situation as his dad because it was my biological dad's brother um but he could talk he lost a whole ton of weight and he lost use of one side of his body, but he could still talk, but he ended up in a nursing home until he finally passed away. So he was that way for several years. And I was like, dang, my, my grandma on my biological mom's side of the family, she had a stroke and she had a series of stroke and she was passed away within a month of when she had her first stroke and went into the hospital. So she kind of went downhill really fast and then was gone. So um, I'm not sure what's going to happen with my sponsor friend because she is slowly making some progress. So she may be able to be better, but she's not going to be well enough to ever go home again. So she's probably going to end up in a nursing home like my grandpa and my uncle 
for the rest of her life, however long that may be. It could be months, it could be years, it could be days. I don't, I don't even know. I don't think anybody else does at this point. So um, it kind of depends on how her body responds to the physical therapy and whether or not she has any more strokes or other health problems. So um, it's kind of all up in the air and every single one is different, but it brings up all of the other stuff for me. And I am so grateful at this point that it's bringing up those things because God has given me an opportunity to look at those parts of my life and understand things differently than I did as a kid because I didn't understand as a kid what the heck a stroke was and what it was doing. Um, and it's allowing me the opportunity to have some positive memories, to to respond differently to this situation, to heal some of those past hurts and to grieve in a different way this time, to allow myself to grieve this time, to reach out and talk to people, to continue to make my videos, to, to actually work on myself during this time instead of shutting down and pushing people away. So it's a way for me to respond differently today. And I am so grateful to God for helping me to do that, for giving me these insights and different perspectives into myself and into other people and to allow me to have that compassion with myself and with others and to have the strength to go and see my friend in the hospital because I saw my biological mom in the hospital so many times and it was hard. I watched my grandmother in the hospital and it was hard. So it's hard and the heart is not going to go away. But the knowledge that I've done this before and I can do this again is there. And that the reason it's hard is because I love these people. And they have been a part of my life and a part of who I am. And I am grateful. I can be grateful and I am grateful for the memories and for the things that they have taught me and that I have learned. And I am grateful that I can share that in these videos um, with anyone that needs to hear that or feel that or is struggling with anything. And I know that God is there for all of us. <laughs> And he's aware of each one of us and he gives us these little <laughs> nuggets of things to help us through. And today he has just been in every part of my day and I am so grateful for that. And I feel so blessed for that. And I feel like I just have to share all of it. Like I said, it's been a long, crazy day, so it's a long, crazy video, but God has been there with me every step of today. And I am so grateful for that in my life and I know that God is there in your life if you're willing to see him and allow him to be there and um, that's what I have to say. My church may always say in the name of Jesus Christ, amen, when we bear our testimony so I kind of feel like that's what I need to do right now. <laughs> it's kind of odd. Um, I know it's not necessary in your video but I kind of feel like it anyway um, because I know that my Savior is real and that he loves me and is blessing my life and he's there every day. and. I am grateful for the opportunity to make these videos and I hope that it helps anyone that's choosing to watch them. And if you like these videos, um, please hit like, subscribe, share with someone else if you think they'll like it too or if you think it'll be beneficial to them as well. And I hope you have a great day full of gratitude and find ways to recognize God's hand in your life too.